Hi everyone, I'm Alex Shaw. I'm Pedro Vigrio. Ray Sartiz. Lindsay Rango. And this is our senior design project. We're Team 7. We're doing Ford Swept Wing Supersonic Airliner. And you can see here in front of you the small scale model of that project. All right, so just to give a quick overview of our project, we chose to design supersonic aircraft because it was a good way of getting introduced into aerospace and aeronautical engineering, a field that our whole team is interested in. Uh, we drew inspiration for our project from aircraft such as the Concorde, which is a supersonic airliner, and the X-29. Both of these aircrafts are capable of su supersonic flight, and the X-29 actually implemented Ford swept wings. Our aircraft is a commercial airliner with a maximum of 127 passengers. Its mission will be transatlantic flight at cruising at supersonic speeds. The weight was chosen to be the same as the Concorde, which is 187,000 kilograms. Half of the fuel is, or half of the weight is designated for the fuel due to the nature of the mission and the inefficiencies of supersonic speeds. So as Maurice explained, we got inspiration from the X-29 and the design of the forward swept wings. Our sweep is 34 degrees, whereas the X-29 was 29 degrees. Ours is 34 due to the sh nature of the shock waves forming in the shape of Mach cone, which is a function of Mach number. With our Mach number being 1.7, a sweep of 34 degrees is ideal for the size and the length of our fuselage. Our taper ratio was also taken from the X-29 with a value of 0 0.45 because this gives us an ideal lift distribution on the wing. So, as Lindsay mentioned, the mock cone is a big part of our project. This happens when you fly a supersonic flight. If your wings are outside the mock cone, you would incur a lot of drag. So, as she mentioned, we selected our sweep to stay inside the mock cone. Another thing we selected for that is the aspect ratio which is the span divided by the cord length. We chose an aspect ratio of 1.7, which is the same as the Concord, which is a very low aspect ratio. Uh, this is one, like I said, to stay within the mock cone, as you can see on the figure here. And another reason is longer wings with a higher aspect ratio produce more lift. More lift generated also causes more drag, which is something we want to minimize for supersonic flight. Another characteristic of our wing that's important is the airfoil. We chose a supersonic airfoil which is the NACA 64004. This has low camber, which reduces the amount of lift it generates, but again, also reduces drag. It also has a low thickness, which again, is better for supersonic flight. Okay, here's our, one, one, of the, one of the four swept wings and advantages is the stall speed and the wave drag. The stall speed is an advantage because it's lowered, it's reduced, and the way the airflow is from the tip to the roots. When, the, when you have this type of flow, during uh, stall speed, you have better air long controls. And for the wave drag advantage, is that the shock waves are more offset at trough towards the trailing edge, uh, rather than in the conventional design where the location of the shock wave is more in the middle of the wing. That's better for fuel consumption of one of the uh, advantages as well. Next slide, please. This is our model here, the we draw SolarWorks. Here's a NASA's engines, landing gear, nose cone, a uh, wing, horizontal wing, and vertical wing, and choose a bunch. Please next, next slide. Uh, one, one of the characteristics of our fuselage is that, is that it has a 55 meters lamp, uh, one of the lamps. Uh, this lamp was, was found using the same arrangement uh, row of each chair. So basing on that, we base the size of the, of the fuselage. Also, uh, another another good good point of our fuselage is that we have an L over D, which is the finest ratio, which is the level fuselage over the diameter. We are in the range of from 10 to 15, which is optimal for supersonic, and ours is 15. Um, another main characteristic of our fuselage is the up sweep angle here on the on the end of the fuselage. We have a 13 degrees, and this 13 degrees is in the range from uh, from 10 to 25, which is optimal for better, uh, for reduced wave drag. Next slide, please. And then also, a main characteristic of our fuselage is that it has a shrinking in the middle. I can show it better in the next slide, please. And as you can
can see from the tip to the middle, it shrinks down right here in the middle. And this reduces cross-sectional area uh, with the maximum span of going there. And then it's relieved from the end. Uh, the, the way that this reduces uh, shock wave formations in, the, in each cross-sectional area of the plane is if you have a, a very smooth uh, cross-sectional area distribution throughout the plane, it's better for less wave drag uh, formation. So one of the actual disadvantages of forward swept wings is longitudinal instability. So that's instability in pitch. To address this, we use the horizontal tail for our design, unlike the Concord, which has a delta wing, which is tailless, and X-29, which is also tailless. This causes more drag, but again, we wanted to prioritize stability to address this downside. Uh, the way longitudinal stability is measured is called static margin, and it's usually in a percentage. A typical static margin value for a stable aircraft is around 10%. Something like the Boeing 747 has around 27%. With our horizontal tail configuration and location, we were able to achieve a static margin of around 35 to 40 percent on average throughout all stages of flight, which is very stable. Uh, this analysis could not quantify the effect of the forward swept wings, so our actual stability would be slightly less, but this would still put us in the range of very stable, which is what we wanted to achieve with this design. All right. So for the propulsion system, we chose to go with the Olympus 593 as pictured behind me. Uh, the Olympus 593 is a turbojet engine. This type of engine are optimal for the speed that we need, and it was actually the same type of engine that the Concorde used. Uh, this engine has a, uh, we chose to go with four total engines, and this engine has a total, or max thrust of 162 kilonewtons. We needed this thrust amount for our required range, takeoff, and landing requirements. Standards followed in the design of our aircraft were those listed in the FAR 25, which is the Federal Aviation Regulation Chapter, specifically for transport aircraft. The two that had the greatest influence on our design pertain to the aisle width and the number of seats per row. This depicted the diameter and length of our fuselage. So for our project, we obviously can't build an entire airliner. So what we did was make a model wing to test if our theoretical design calculations are lining up with actual data. We 3D printed this wing, and here it is in the wind tunnel with our mount. And we got some data from the wind tunnel in terms of lift coefficient, drag coefficient versus angle of attack. So here's the first curve we have. It's our coefficient of lift divided by coefficient of drag, which is called your lift to drag ratio versus the angle of attack. The first thing is this shape of the curve is expected for this type of curve, so we know that we're getting good data. The second thing is our maximum lift to drag ratio here is around five. And this validates our theoretical calculations in which we estimated the lift to drag ratio at takeoff conditions of five for our design. Here we ended up at about 4.9. So we had a very high amount of accuracy with the theoretical and our actual wing in the wind tunnel test for this parameter. Another important data set is the coefficient of lift versus the angle of attack. Again, the shape of our curve linear is what we expect for this type of curve, so we know that we're getting good data here. Second most important parameter here is the lift curve slope, which we found by linear curve fit. The slope of this lift curve is 0 0.0289, which again has a low error with our theoretically calculated values. So this shows that our design is having very close behavior to the theoretical. In actual aircraft design, hundreds of iterations will happen in the wind tunnel to optimize and tweak certain parameters and test different configurations until the optimal design is found. For us, we were able to do one iteration of that to introduce us into that whole design process.